Dear colleagues, friends, I'm sorry that my travel schedule did not allow me to be with you in person today, but I'm glad to be able to deliver some brief remarks from afar, because I think these consultations are of vital importance, not just to all of you participating in them, but to the wider international community. And so I want to make three brief points, which I hope will help to frame your discussions. The first is very simple. We need a new approach to peace. And that's not to say that what we have done so far hasn't worked. In fact, international support to national peace efforts has led to many positive results. And I'm sure that our host, Colombia, can testify to this. However, despite the decrease in the number of conflicts worldwide, we still do not live in a peaceful world. There are people living today who have known nothing but war for their entire lives. There are children who have experienced unspeakable atrocities. And there are whole families fleeing across battle lines, borders and oceans. This suffering is still happening and it demands a new approach. The United Nations must lead the way and it must use the 2016 resolutions on sustaining peace as a guidebook. They outline clear yet crucial steps. They confirm that we must do more to stop wars before they start, that we must enhance cooperation and coordination between all United Nations offices, actors and operations in the field and that we must not merely create new tools and mechanisms for peace, but also change how we use what's already in our toolbox. However, as my second point, I want to stress that the United Nations cannot do this alone. We have a collective responsibility for peace, and your consultations must make this clear. Over the next two days, discussions will be had between representatives of governments, the United Nations, academia, and civil society. They will explore how to better engage with non-traditional actors, including international financial institutions, regional organizations, and the private sector. And I'm glad to see that they will also focus on the participation of women and youth. So these consultations demonstrate that partnerships are crucial to sustaining peace. And that's why we need to hear from all stakeholders. We need their ideas. And importantly, we need their experience. Because although sustaining peace offers a new approach, it does not mean starting from scratch. And this is my third point. There are already examples of sustaining peace taking place on the ground. These regional consultations will showcase many of them. Although Latin America has no open conflict, it has its own vulnerabilities and trigger points. And it has produced some pioneering initiatives to prevent these from spilling out into conflict. We need to learn from them. We need to replicate them. And this is particularly true as we prepare to convene a high-level meeting on peace building and sustaining peace in New York this coming April. The best practices you identify, as well as the ideas and challenges you discuss, can feed into this meeting. So I want to thank Colombia for convening these consultations. And I want to appeal to all of you to engage, to debate, to question, and to think outside the box. My team will be following up to ensure that what you say in Colombia is heard on the international stage. Thank you again, and good luck in your discussions.